Hello, viewer. Welcome to CXM Gaming. Why don't you click on full screen and 1080p for the best quality? Because if you don't, you'll be next. Oh, now sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to CXM Gaming. Today we will be doing our very first voice actor interview, which is Mike Vaughn. He has done quite a few roles for his career so far, and he's widely known for the revival of Scream, which is a TV series. He plays the voice of the main Brandon James killer. He has done Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which is a video game that came out a few years ago, and the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, Iggy Koopa, Ludwig von Koopa. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. Oh, really? <laughs> well, hello. It's nice to meet you, Mike. I'm Kyle, and me and Rachel do a lot of cool horror and video games. This is actually the first interview we've ever done. Yeah, hey, happy you're getting paid. So tell me, what got you into voice acting? And do you have any inspirations of, like, you know, people before you that got you into it? Uh, it was an accident. So um, I used to be in the uh, late 90s, mid 90s. I was a writer producer in the advertising world. And they made me Radio Boy, which meant I wrote most of the radio spots for that office. And then I, I'm. I not only wrote them, you went in and produced them. And so I got I got really good advice early on, which was as a copywriter, um, read your scripts out loud. A, time, and to see how they sound and feel. So I went in and did what you're never supposed to do to a talent I read her. I frustrated. I do know. After she left, the engineer said, wow, you've got that Gen X thing down. You ever thought about doing voiceover work? And I said, God, no, I hate the sound of my voice. Well, did you see her contract and how much she made? And I said, oh, yeah, cut me a demo. So I just read three of my own scripts, um, moved to Portland, Oregon about a month later. And I put the three script demo that I'd read as a cassette under an agent store, the best agent in town. And they signed me that Monday. And I just did it for fun while I continued on in the advertising marketing world. And I would just go in a couple times a week and record the cassette. And I was just having fun. And I didn't book anything for like a year. And then after a year, I got my first gig, then my second, then my third. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, look, you can do this online now, too. So I just built it up over time. And then by 2006, um, acting was a third of my income, particularly. And I was like, you know, it doesn't look like the world of L.A. Games, video games, and animation is coming up here. I guess I better go down there. So I went down there in 07, um, got signed by a couple agents right away, and was a full-time actor within that year. And then I've been a full-time actor ever since. So, yeah, I just sort of fell into it by accident. It was not... I went to school. I went to college for music performance and business. So I had nothing to do with acting. And then I... When I moved to L.A., I got serious and took a lot of classes, did improv, did a lot of stuff, and then just kept going. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. Everybody gets into it differently. So, that's... so are there any voice actors in particular that you took inspiration from and maybe incorporate in your work a little bit or get ideas from? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Phil, Phil, Hart always, Phil Hartman always blew me away. Um the ability to go from one extreme character to another and his wife voices and dialects and all that. And he's just so solid. He could play the, the, you know, the straight guy or the banana in the, in the sketches do either. It was just so versatile. That was, that was my blowing. Um, and then anybody that just captures my interest, I'm always right away. Thomas Lennon. I really like his work a lot. So it's just kind of whoever's in front of me that I'm blown away by, you know. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't really, you know, because, you know, everybody has their Adam Sandler moment and has a real, <laughs> and then, well, you know, that Gary Oldman is a god. So, you know, just the usual, usual stuff. And I don't think, I don't think Steve Buscemi gets enough credit. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so there's a lot, there's a, so many good actors out there now and they're all doing everything. So. I also think it's great that people in this generation are now starting to respect voice actors for their work. 
I feel like back then they didn't really get respect and I think it's great you know that now people are starting to really recognize what you guys do for like work you know what do you think what do you think changed I mean what do you why well, I think with celebrities obtaining the roles for a lot of these new iconic, you know, animations, it's kind of shedding a better light upon this field. I think that back then with a lot of the animations, people didn't really pay attention to who voiced their iconic characters. Yeah. Uh, and now, now with IMDb, you can find out. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It seemed like... Uh, um, it seemed like, you know, celebs are uh, you know, going for anything and everything. Like I said, everybody's doing everything that's interesting to them, and that's great. Uh, so, uh, you know, it used to be back in the day, if you did films, you don't dare do television. If you did television, you dare didn't do animation. But now nobody cares. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I, know, I know I'm auditioning against some names a lot of times. So it's... It's it's harder to win, but it's sweeter when you do. <laughs> well, now let's go ahead and dive into the Scream TV series. I know that you did the voice of the Brandon James Killer. Ah, uh, favorite. So how was it doing the voice for the Brandon James Killer? I know one of our favorite scenes from the show was when you were calling Emma, trying pretending to be an electrician company person, but then your voice started getting more sinister over the phone call, and I think that's really interesting. And I also think that your voice is actually um, better than Roger Jackson's for this particular show. I think that's a very interesting change of variety because I think it, it just fit more different in this show. You know, there's a new mask, so a new voice, too, fits good. Yeah, um, the original voice of Roger Jackson was certainly very for the movies, you know? Mm hmm um, Forever, and, you know, he's a workhorse, and he's awesome, and... The TV, I think, you know, they even changed the mask. So, yeah, they did. They're just trying to uh, take it into today's time because Scream TV had this whole element of text messaging too, which I thought, why even bother with a voice? Can you just make text really scary? <laughs> so, um, but I, I, uh, my audition was actually his bit with Drew Barrymore in the first one, and the one thing I didn't want to do was be him. Um, because he's him, you know, that yeah, goes back to your, it's me. I, it, it's better just to bring yourself and not try to be somebody else. And I just, that night when I got the audition, I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to put a ton of pressure on myself for this. So let's try something different. So I went out on my patio. I had one scotch, one cigar, went right in the booth and just did it in one take for fun, just for fun. Just had Woke up the next morning thinking, eh, I'm going to have to, you know, do it again and send it one. I listened back and I was like, nah, that was fun. And I sent it and through a lot of other, uh, you know, my booth director having a relationship with the casting director, the casting director actually knowing me and my audition, all that came together and I got the gig without another audition. So that that was incredible. But I decided to do something different, which... Uh, when I scare people, when I try to, when I, when I'm angry and I'm trying to scare somebody, that, and so, and you're not trying to be scary as an actor, you're trying to get something, you know, you're, you, you need something. Um, and so I just brought, brought, you know, what I do to people when I get really pissed. And <laughs> what it gave me early on was, you're not really pissed either, you're a cat playing with a mouse. And I love that direction. So I, I was just, most of the time I was playing. I was just toying with whoever was on the phone. And that was, mm -hmm. my favorite line is the very last line of my entire run, which is, who who told you you could wear my mask? That was my favorite. That, that feels, I was like, oh, hell yeah. They wouldn't even show me that last scene until the very, 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 they kept it a surprise for me. So that was fun. But, I don't know if I even answered your question, but it's it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard they're going to be doing a season three sometime this year in 2018. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, cool. I haven't heard, we haven't heard a thing. Even when they came back for season two, we hadn't heard a, you don't hear anything until, and until they're ready for you. They may have even already shot. So like they would shoot January through spring 
in um, Louisiana. And then I don't even come in until it's all shot and edited. And then I come in and fill in oh, the wow. holes. So that's all. It was a fun, awesome gig. But yeah, I, I season three comes out. I It's not looking good. It's been a couple of years, so. Yeah, I know, right? Honestly. Finger crossed. Well, yeah, we really enjoyed the series, and I think your voice is great. You scared the crap out of me for most of the episodes that I watched, for sure. Like, every time you pick up the phone, you're like, yay, I can't wait to hear your voice. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, definitely, no problem. And yeah, I think that the Scream TV series is definitely one of the best um, roles that you've done. I think that you've definitely liked it quite a lot as well, like you said. Yeah, 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 that was my first time that. So tell me, how was it like recording the voiceovers for the Brandon James Killer? Like, were you ever on set, or were you always off set when you did them? Here, here's, here's actually what happens. Um, I get called in for a session. Uh, I have to wait a couple minutes while they get the session ready. I walked into Wildfire Studios, which is this really nice studio that was blocks from my agent agent's office and um you just walk in there's a giant screen microphone above you and the scripts on the stand in front of you all i got and then they would play the scene on the screen and i'd see it and i might want to see it one more time and then i get three beeps beep 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 and then i do my lines and so i would hear um whoever i was having a dialogue with sometime and then look at the script see what that person's doing, make my decisions, and go. So there's no sitting back, nothing. I'm walking from my car, getting a coffee, going into the booth, doing the work, and leaving probably within less than an hour. And wow, sometimes that's crazy. more than one show in that hour, too. So it's fast and furious, and you don't get, you don't get time. And you don't see the scripts ahead of time. You don't get anything. In fact, one time, uh, the producer, Aaron, he gave me his cell phone, his iPhone 6 at the time. And he said, give us the scratch track reads where that's where I read them before they've edited. And then they use my lines to edit around. And so I was just reading wild, just reading off his phone. And there were two episodes that were read off his phone that went straight to air. I didn't, I was not called back to the session for it. So it was just, that's how fast they work. And those guys work hard and they work long hours. So, you know, the talent, you gotta, you gotta like, okay. You know, get your marks, do it, and get out. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever meet any of the cast from the show, like, when they were off set, you know, like, not recording during the lines and stuff? Yeah, um, Tom Mack played Jake. I met him. We had a we had a nice, decent conversation. Um, you know, brief. And then um, the guy who played Emma's dad. I'm spacing his name because I'm really bad at names. <laughs> Me too. Also, the guy who played Kieran, I'm spacing his name. He has a weird name, though, right? I yeah, he has, like, a really weird name. I can't remember how you say it. <laughs> See? We're good at this. So, uh, <laughs> they they would come in. They would be doing what's called ADR uh, work, where they're fixing their lines or doing their, you know, death noises or efforts or whatever they didn't get when they recorded the scene. So they're coming, you know, months later after shooting and replacing their lines. And so they would go, um, they would go first or the loop group would go first and then I'd come in. And so in passing, we'd be like, Hey, how you doing? And, uh, you know, small conversation and all that. So That's yeah, really it was cool. brief, but there, I, I actually, when I left a scream session, there was, um, Warren Beatty sitting there and we fought, we fought over who gets the booth. So, that dude, that dude looks good for his age. Holy crap. <laughs> like, damn. Damn. Everything's all perfect in Hollywood, it seems like. <laughs> well, he, oh, everybody's so pretty. Let me tell you. It was amazing. And I love doing the work. Um, but, yeah, life goes on. You know, on to the next gig. I've been the voice of PBS Kids after that. So to go from killer to, like, kid-friendly, up next, voices. <laughs> So what did you think about the show? Like, did you guess who the killer was from the very beginning? Because I know they don't tell you, right? I, I liked it. 
I liked it because I was sort of I was sort of thinking it, but I wasn't sure. Season one, because um, again, I don't get to see the full episodes; I only get to see my scenes. I guess correctly that it was the woman um, blogger or um, webcast woman or whatever. I guessed mm. that correctly uh, early on. I was like, "Oh, I know it's her," and I was right. Second season, I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. And uh, my wife enjoys those uh, teen teen angsty sort of. Uh, uh, shows and so we watched it so do you like hearing your voice over when you and your wife are watching it on tv I, no it's it, it's weird it's weird i mean how how do you feel when you rewatch your videos yeah i know what you mean i don't like it either I, you don't you, it's there's different. times where you're like oh, i could have done that better and there's times it's like I see why everybody's so scared yeah you know, it's very rare where you're like oh that was awesome it's very rare usually Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a little sleepy. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, I should have done that bit. Like, you're always, like, <laughs> yeah. Self-critiquing. Well, just try to, like, what, oh, I could have done that better. Whatever. But, you know, at at this point, you learn to let go, and, like, you can't. If you spent all day trying to be perfect, A, it probably wouldn't have any originality or, or honesty in it, you know. Plus, you'd just wear yourself out. So you just have to let things go, you know. You just, oh. mm mm-hmm. <laughs> so who do you think the new killer is since kieran just got killed on the last finale episode so that means there has to be another killer now on the loose i didn't realize he was dead i didn't realize kieran was dead no did something come out that i didn't see well there was a season like finale it was kind of like a special they made after uh i did he was in the prison right they, yeah, that they had that uh, holiday special one where they're yeah, on like the a one. they're on like an island or something. Yeah, that's it. After I, think, I forgot that he died. Yeah, at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, and that episode had nothing to do with the Lakewood killer, so that means another one's on the loose now. No, you got me. You got me, and you. <laughs> From what I can tell, a lot of these shows don't even have the answer sometimes. They don't even. Yeah, yeah that's true. I didn't think about that. The reason was that I was watching an interview uh, that the writer saying um, they would end seasons and not know where it was going to go the next season. And they just sort of had to start up with, well, that's where we left off. Let's keep going. Wow. Because, I mean, you're not paying to write the next stuff. So. Mm. Maybe they just killed him and they'll decide who it was the writer did know. I don't even think it's the same crew for season three. I don't think writers, production company, anybody. I think it's all new. So wow. That's I don't know. And then with the Weinstein company going down, it's like, I man, we have no news. We have no information. So. Like I said, we're last on the totem pole to get booked and dealt with. So we don't hear anything. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. I'm just glad they brought you back for season two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they almost didn't. <laughs> I wanted too much money. <laughs> but, but, I mean, fair. You know. But that's that's Hollywood. That's how it works. You negotiate. negotiate. And um, it was very reasonable, and everybody was happy. It, it, it was maybe ten minutes of back and forth, and we were all set. But I'm just, I'm joking. They were very sweet. So, <laughs> agent's a rock star. So, we handle, awesome. you know, you handle it. That's how you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So, I heard there's also a Scream game in production right now based off of the TV series and the movie. So, I heard that you're going to be in it, supposedly? Yeah. an indie. Uh, it's an indie developer who contacted me, and I said, you know, I... I roll my eyes at these things a lot of times because a lot of people aren't curious, you know, and I'm very easy to contact. And so I roll my eyes a little bit and I go, hey, cool, here's my agent. And then I warned my agent. I said, this may not be real. You might want to, you know, test it out a little bit. And apparently it's he's got backing and it's a real deal and he's got permissions and he's allowed to do it. And I've said, sure. And he's agreed to do a union contract and everything. And I'm like, all right. We're all set, then whatever you want. So, um, I think he's using all the voices, actually. I think he's trying to get Roger as well. 
and trying to get some of the actors from both the movies and the TV series. So it'll be interesting. Um, I'm a big fan of games and indie games. I think it's great. Yeah, that would so, be really cool. I hope he pulls it off, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you hear what happened with the Friday the 13th game? They actually can't add any more content now because there is a long-time lawsuit from the regular franchise, and now it's interfering with the game. Yeah, you have to get permission. You <laughs> have to get the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good he got permission then. He, he did, as far as we know. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he even has something with MTV. I, I think he does. But oh, I, wow, that's awesome. You know, a lot of games, um, you know, are built and never come out. So mm-hmm. it's one of those industries where I, what do they say for every like six, only one or two make it to market? Jeez, I, I, it That's seems crazy. like a lot of hard work. So I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I know developers work seventy, ninety hour weeks and you know not make a ton of money. So I don't know. How, yeah, yeah. But then if it's a hit, you know, yay. <laughs> then it's worth it. Then it pays off. Then it pays off for somebody. So according to Audrey, you're just an app voice that is used to be the killer. So you're not even a real person, according to the show. What? App voice? You said app voice. I have not done an app voice. What are you... Remember when Audrey says you're like the app voice in the show? Uh, you mean just the voice? Okay. Yeah. A lot of people have contacted me and asked me to help them make a app where it is just my voice. Mm-hmm. And I have to explain that, like, the it take it takes six months of studio work to do a Siri or Jeez. to do an Alexa or to do one of those things. They seriously work for six months straight just for <laughs> possible options, and it is a phenom- It's it's. Yeah, no way. And the rate to get a talent on that should be about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's a lot of yeah, work. That's like all the you hear on Apple and Android. They got paid a lot of money, but they were booked out for six months. So yeah, no, I can't do an app. But no, <laughs> very simple. It's not going to sound as good because I'm not on my studio mic. Um, but well, let's just do your promos. What's what's the name of your podcast? CXM Gaming. What's it? CXM Gaming. CSX Gaming. Welcome. Oh, no, CXM. What does that stand for, CXM? It stands for Computer Xbox Minecraft. It was, like, way back when we used to play the Xbox, and we used to play Minecraft a lot more, too, back then. Welcome to CXM Gaming. If you don't watch this, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> That's good. That's about the best thing to do. That was pretty good. <laughs> All I do. Hello, Kyle. <laughs> well, I... Oh my god, that's hilarious. Could you do a, uh, maybe a voice thing for Rachel since she wasn't able to make it? I think it would be funny to scare her. And what issue are you having with Rachel? Well, no issue really, just she's going away on a new job. She's going to be starting down in the Boca area, so, um, <laughs> I think it would just be funny to say something like to scare her. <laughs> Rachel, right? Hello, Rachel. I heard you took a new job away from your sweet, sweet Kyle. Well, you might want to keep the doors locked and those windows rolled up tight. Because if Kyle's away, I might come and play. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Mike. That's awesome. <laughs> you may not have a girlfriend after this. <laughs> Can I, can I, can I just vent about one thing? Yeah, go for it. You brought, uh, you brought up the Nintendo Mario brother. Mm-hmm. You know, I only recorded for them once. Wow. Once. 2007, um, I did a game, New Super Mario Brothers, for the Nintendo Wii. Mm-hmm. All I agreed to do. Um, I even had on the contract scratched out, which was impossible to do with Nintendo, but I had scratched out. You can't use my work in advertising or promotions, anything outside the game, uh-uh, game only. And then the rest of the contract is any and all use, but I had crossed out the marketing part. So this is 2007, you know, 
And I go in, I fly from LA to Seattle. I do a three hour session where I'm just going, you know, and then Iggy, like that's all I'm doing is basically speaking in Ikea and all the efforts and deaths and all that. Three hours of that, I left the booth sweating. We had fun, high five, great crew, totally fun. Um, and then the following year, uh, maybe two years later, there's another credit all of a sudden on my IMDb. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't voice that. And so I checked with a friend who played it, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's still you. And I'm like, okay, I didn't get paid for it. <laughs> and so I contacted my agent, and they said, well, the contract said any and all use. And who in their right minds would have thought that a video game development company, a video game publisher, would take the same work from one game and literally cut, copy, and paste it into a new title with brand new, you know, $60 per game fees. That's insane. So they took old work, pasted it back in, because it's gibberish, and didn't pay, doesn't pay their actors. So I was just like, great. You know, it's not worth it to sue because you don't make that much per game, but it's against the spirit of the contract, you know, which is yeah, that's a you shame. should pay your actors per game like you do your developers and animators and all that. Because mm -hmm. we're part of the game that you're selling for new. Well, they Nintendo doesn't see it that way. And so five years later, they called my agent again and asked if I would do more voices. And I said, sure, as long as it's per game now. You can't copy it into other games. They never call it back. So I was like, awesome. So I'm not a fan of Nintendo. I am of Nintendo and their advertising because their advertising goes to an ad agency and the ad agency makes it union, which is awesome. That protects us as actors. So you will make 50 times more money doing an ad or set of ads for Nintendo through their ad agency than you will if you are the voice of the game. That's crazy. I I tell people I feel bad for the gamers that play Nintendo's mm -hmm. because you're paying full price for a game that was not given full love. Yeah. It was given, you know, patchwork love. It's like here, just get it out. Cut copy. They made it as cheap as possible, and they charge their customers full price and expect a great reaction and they keep coming out with devices when we have these things called smartphones like i just feel things, <laughs> something's weird with that company as a whole so i'm a playstation fan and i have the same here for a long time so kids out there get your playstations and xboxes on yeah i just got Skip a ps4 yeah they're great yeah i know just recently they came out with a uh, a new type of like thing new system what do you think about the VR stuff? I'm interested in that. No, it's like some completely new, like, Nintendo system that you, like, new games and everything on it. The Switch! Yeah, that's it. More hardware! Yay! That's what we need! More devices in our pockets! <laughs> I know. God! Right? My phone's already enough, are you kidding? Dude, <laughs> come on. I mean, they did put Nintendo on the, I, the latest iPhone. That was cool. Alright. Smart move there. But then nothing sensed. Like, my wife, my wife would love to play uh, Super Mario Brothers, but, you know, she can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost bought her one of those. I was in New York, um, like, probably a decade ago, and all the little uh, electronic shops were selling this, like, hacked toy. It was like a mini Nintendo, but it was not a Nintendo. And you just plug it directly into your TV, and you can play some Nintendo games. And, oh, wow. of course, Nintendo comes in and says, nah. At, you know infringement and gets rid of it but for um i regret i regret not picking one up <laughs> when they were around yeah they never update their games man yeah yeah i was just uh looking at your imdb and i see that you actually have 10 credited roles in the mario games and 10 games they've used the same files for end game wow <laughs> that's just crazy yeah you'd think they'd just bring you back in the studio to record new lines yep well there's more money I didn't get, and more money in my pocket, and the gamers are being hoodwinked. The funny thing is, I wouldn't even know if they didn't throw it up on my IMDb page. <laughs> they don't add that. They put it up there, and I'm like, what is this? Jeez. I think somebody is having just a good laugh, like, let's get Mike worked up again, you know? 
we didn't pay him. Let's let's show him. And and I also know that the guy who does the voice of Mario, um, spacing his name because I'm really great with names, uh, <laughs> lives in San Francisco, and and he's you know he's a he's a working voice actor who's I wouldn't say struggling for work, but he's always going out getting work. I mean, he's not you know yeah. he's he's not buying a house with his Nintendo money. Let's put. Yeah, he's trying to get some you know gigs in you know. And, I know a lot of other actors that have done one role for Nintendo and moved on because of the the crazy contract they have. But that's crazy. You know, maybe it works for them. I guess. But I, I, I was a I was a Nintendo fan for about ten minutes over the holidays when the Wii first came out, and that was about it. Yep, same here. <laughs> I just have the regular Wii. The original. Yeah. 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 It's too bad. It's too bad. You know, they don't put a little more um i guess originality newness to their stuff sometimes but Mm -hmm. maybe they're operating on the philosophy of if it works why fix it i'm just surprised the old audio files actually work on all these different games like how they can just move them over and just throw them in there like that i'm impressed that they all work for everything like i give you that much coverage i didn't yeah, that's just crazy. I'm surprised they didn't just bring you back in the studio to do some new lines. Like, wow. I I would think so, too. I would think so, too. I don't know. And they did ask for more. And I said, sure, as long as it's per game. You know? And now that the union has a um, really good and... Well, not good, but better um, interactive contract, no reason why they can't go union. There's no, resi- There's no residuals. It's profit sharing. So if the game does well, the actors get a few hundred bucks more. That's it. Yeah. No, no loss there, you know. I don't know why they would get get some... Uh, I mean, can you imagine Alec Baldwin as Iggy? <laughs> you could... Oh. Here you go. That'd be awesome. I don't know. That'd be, that would be amazing! <laughs> you could be a great actor the movie-like experience now and so you know i wish i had more time to play games <laughs> i want out the vr stuff for the games i really want to see how that plays out have you done that no i haven't tried it out but i think it would be really cool to like see how it works and stuff the games look amazing in it the quality and stuff yeah i want to see how it plays out i've done some vr demos but they're not full fleshed out games mm-hmm. really so it must have been pretty cool, huh? I've never done a VR experience before for gaming. The one I did was a demo that was done by a company here in Oregon, and um, you can move around a little bit, you know, because they set up in just a small area. Uh, yeah, you can. When you walk, the character walks, and you feel it. So, like, if you bend your knees, like right now, you can see like lines around you move, right? Mm-hmm. Thing with the VR headset, if you move your knees and you duck down, the world moves. Wow. But the other types of VR is just where you stick like a 360 camera inside a car. Mm. If you move your nothing happens. But you can move your head around where the lens would be. That's yeah. that's kind of the difference. And But you can't walk towards the end of the car. You can't get out of it. So there's interactive VR and then there's 360 VR. So I think the PlayStation stuff is more 360 VR where instead of the controller spinning your view around on the screen, it's your head spinning you around. But your forward movement and your gun movements and all that are still the trigger, are still the controller. That's oh, okay. that's my understanding anyway. So, and then there are VR games, but they're you know you got to set up a bigger room, and mm-hmm. I don't think they're the AAA titles. There's no way they could be. Yeah, but it's coming. Definitely, it is it's coming. A whole new generation of stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. My mother was asking me about if there's VR so she could hike the Appalachian Trail or hit or Everest or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's so, something like and that. I looked into it, but you have to get you know a, a, the headset that's a few hundred bucks, and then you got to get a computer that can run all that, and that Jeez. could you know that could be a thousand or more easy. It's a lot of space too, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of data. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. But you can see, I, I've been playing around with the 360 videos on YouTube. I don't have a headset, but you can move the cursor and it moves around. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I've seen some That's of those. Cool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just 360 video. Yeah. So the gaming will be be fun, fun to get into. Yeah, definitely a whole new generation of stuff. So if your if your Minecraft is what you did before, what are you into now? Well, we do a lot of horror games now. Um, we do Amnesia a lot, a lot of custom made maps on there. Oh yeah. And I got some other really good games too. Let me get up and see what I got on my shelf. Um, I got Mafia 3, which is a really good one so far. I got Skyrim, and then I got Fallout 4, which is great. Fallout, amazing. God, Fallout, mind blowing. Oh yeah, I love it. So great, so great, so immersive. So is the new one? I is the new one supposed to take place in sort of the Hollywood, California area? No, I don't think so. I think it actually takes place in Virginia, but I was hoping it would. Uh, California. God, they're really sticking to the East Coast. Yeah, I know. I wish they would start spreading more out west or something. Yeah, I think the new Far Cry is p- the Pacific Northwest, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm... <laughs> I, want to, I want to see a Grand Theft Auto in Portland and Seattle. Be funny. Delivering... <laughs> whole product is weed and meth that would be amazing <laughs> there were actually rumors um that it was going to take place in portland so that would actually be pretty funny that would that would be interesting man portland's fun yeah it seems like a beautiful place and you're in florida right yeah what part uh near orlando about a 40 minute drive yep yep pretty nice area oh, cool. very good yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I may have gone to Daytona a couple times during my college years. Pretty nice area, right? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> spring break jams, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. So when did you move to Portland? Uh, I moved to Portland last September. Oh, nice. I just Yeah, because voiceover work you can pretty much do from anywhere now. And, and um, I was flying back for my um, gig for Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Mobius. So mm-hmm. I was flying when I had a gig for that and staying a couple of days and then flying back. And oh, so nice. it's a two-hour flight from Portland. It's nothing. So awesome. live here, work there, boom. Mm-hmm. I love it here. I love it here. The winters are rough, but it's it's lovely right now. Sun's out till nine p.m. and it's it's nice and warm and it's awesome. So, That's great. And there's no there's not a lot of smog like L.A. <laughs> I I didn't want my kid to uh, grow up in a car and with all that smog and so mm-hmm. it, and I wanted to be able to run outside and run down the block and so we had to we had to pack it on up and get back up here. That's nice. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to Portland, but I've been in the main Seattle, you know, Washington area where, you know, they have the Space Needle up in the sky, and it's a really nice area. It's definitely a beautiful city for sure. I go there again. Yeah. Hit me up if you come up. Definitely. That would be cool. My time is past, mister. I got to get on with my day. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you for your time. That's great. No problem. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this nice little interview, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you for joining us. See you guys. Bye. Bye. I can see what you're doing. You better like and subscribe, or I'm going to gut you like a fish.